shear strain rate, the tensor that we wrote with nine components uh, is so important for many reasons. Uh, for example, it helps to develop relationship between fluid stress and strain rate. So there will be stress also and uh, you, uh, the, the, the strain and both of them they occur when external forces are applied and if the fluid is uh, compressible and uh, the viscosity also occurs, uh, so their existence creates vorticity, it creates uh, shear stresses, shear strain and so on and therefore we need to calculate and we need to know what they are. In addition, uh, we need to, uh, this is useful to determine the flow visualization that how a particular flow is being represented in a, in a diagram, for example, or visually. Uh, as I have mentioned before somewhere, that the study of fluids is a very visual subject. We need to see things. We need to carry out experiments. We need to do a lot of computation whether they are analytical through equations of motion or whether they are computational. So CFD here means computational simulation that we try to represent a particular fluid flow and then we want to see how does it behave, how does it look like. So its visualization should match the real flow and therefore it's very important and therefore these components, these mathematical equations the, that I just mentioned are so important. The vorticity vector is defined as the curl of velocity vector zeta that is curl of we represented with this. Now again vorticity and rotationability or rotationality. How does it take place again because of shear stress shear strain, whenever there is shear, it generates rotation. If it generates rotation, then there is a term that we call as vorticity. What is vorticity? We denote it by the Greek alphabet zeta and that is equal to curl of V. The curl represented by Greek alphabet delta is a vector quantity. And as you can see, uh, we can write down its term, it's equal to delta cross V. So it's written in vector form and delta cross V, as you are familiar with, it will have its components in X, Y, Z directions. If we are using rectangular coordinates and obviously if we are using polar coordinates, then the in polar coordinates it may be represented in terms of let us say if we are using r, theta and phi or whatever parameters we may use. So vorticity is equal to twice the angular velocity and you know that the angular velocity as we have written mentioned earlier is denoted by omega. Angular velocity is different from vorticity. Vorticity, it is equal to twice the angular velocity and angular velocity is denoted by omega. Omega is half of curl of V. So it will be equal to, therefore, in our present notation, zeta by 2. And in Cartesian coordinates, if I have to write it in x, y, z direction, with i, j, k, unit vectors respectively in these directions, then it is zeta, uh, then the vorticity vector is represented by partial derivative of w by with respect to y minus partial derivative of v component of the velocity with respect to z. Similarly, the y component will be partial derivative of u with respect to z minus partial derivative of w with respect to x 
plus the third important component, the partial derivative of v with respect to x minus partial derivative of u with respect to y. Remember, this is if the motion is three-dimensional. If the motion is taking place only in a certain direction, then the components will be zero if the motion is not taking place in that direction. Like if it is not taking place in i direction, this will be zero. If it is not taking place, if there is no change in the y direction, then this component will vanish. And similarly for the third component. In our standard notation that we normally use, and in cylindrical coordinates, in cylindrical polar coordinates, R we normally use R theta Z. So zeta represented, and I am sure you are familiar with transformation of these rectangular coordinates from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. You must have done these exercises in your earlier calculus studies. And they are represented in R, theta, and Z direction as written here, as shown here. And normally, as I have mentioned uh, when talking about the rectangular coordinate, the, the zeta is equal to zero, the flow will be irrotational. So, if there is no vorticity, if zeta is identically zero, then we call such a flow as irrotational. If zeta is non-zero, we call it rotational. So, two broad spectrum, rotational flow, irrotational flow. And both are important, both occur in real phenomena, and therefore, while studying fluids, we need to study both type of fluids.